Hello, friends, and welcome back to Malicious Compliance Stories. Wow, that's quite a story. I'm glad you found a better job and got away from John, OP. He sounds like a terrible boss. I hope you enjoyed your visit to your hometown and your new car. But before we dive in, make sure to hit that subscribe button, smash the like button if you enjoy the content, and ring that notification bell so you never miss a juicy story. Deal with it or find a new job. As a young adult, I decided to move several hundred miles away on a whim without a new job lined up. Fortunately, the relatives I was living with knew a ton of people in the small town and were able to get me a job within a week at the local grocery store. I was to be a courtesy clerk bagging groceries and stocking shelves. Immediately, I made friends with co-workers and some of the customers weren't too bad either. However, management was a different deal like the HR manager who would waste a customer's time telling them recipes for the items they have and holding up the line. She would also call me from the back of the store to bag two items and help the man barely older than me to his car, despite him protesting. There was also John, the general manager. John would be nice in groups, but if he got you alone, his true colors would show. He once berated me for having a 5 o'clock shadow, even though I shaved right before work. My hair is dark and grows quickly. Sorry, dude. Can't help nature. After a few months, the night janitor, technically early morning, quit. John decided it would now be my job to polish the floors every morning. My previous job was at a movie theater, so working from 5 p.m. to 2 a.m. was normal. Mornings? Not my jam. This would require me to be at work by 4 a.m., but I was told this would be for one to two months tops. I was even thrown a sweet five-cent raise for my troubles. How could I decline? After a month, I asked John how the search for a replacement's going. He says, probably two weeks and everything will be settled. After month two, I ask again. John says the first person fell through and suggests that maybe I know someone who might be looking for a job. I assure him that it's not the case. After the third month, I was completely over it. Again, I approached John and explained that I cannot keep doing this much longer. He replies, not my problem. Find somebody else or a new job. This pissed me off but I wasn't in the position to walk out right then. I figured I'd start applying anywhere I could. Couple of days later, possibly even the same day, my relative drags me with them to go look at new cars. While discussing prices and waiting for the sales manager to respond, my relative and the salesperson were just BSing, and I mentioned what John had told me about the job. The salesperson raised an eyebrow and walked away. Moments later, the sales manager approached and said they were looking for a detailer and asked if I was interested. It'd be a regular schedule, no evenings, and higher than even my previous theater job as a manager. While my relative was signing financing paperwork, I was filling out a new hire packet. I was to begin work on Tuesday of the next week. When I got home, I packed a bag and began driving to my hometown to visit friends. I knew I would have to work for about a week because at midnight I called the grocery store and told them I would not be returning to work. If you have any questions, please ask John. Epilogue a year or so after my departure, John was mysteriously no longer working at the store. Nobody knew why, as he had another five years before retirement. One day, I had to go to the bank to deposit a check, and John was the teller. It was so fun to watch him deposit my paycheck for my new employer. It's amazing how many things are not a problem until it's their problem. The best response to not my problem is saying, challenge accepted, in your head. And our second story. Lady, I make the blades. I don't use them. So I'm around 21, a young blacksmith by hobby, and sometimes do jobs for other very small companies. And I was just finishing up a job for a butcher company I knew well and bought from very often. And when I finished a meat cleaver and custom grip, along with two other very large knives, when they reminded me I needed to get some meat for dinner and decided to hand deliver the order to my butcher friend. I'm headed down to the butcher shop, insert small town cold cuts place, and greet my well-known friend, we'll call him FB, and I walk back behind the counter to show him his new set of freshly forged cutlery, and he was as usual happy and went to the back for my payment after I was showing him a few things I had added specifically for him. Enter her short dark hair tied up a baggy sweater and yoga pants, we will call her Helen. 
Now, keep in mind, I didn't take my thick leather apron off, so I may have looked like an employee, but I was terribly out of place as it was dusted with burn marks and had a couple bits of slag on the surface. Helen, excuse me, I was supposed to get my order an hour ago. Me, I'm sorry? I placed the new blades down as I was stress testing them for FB, something I should have done at home, mind you. Helen, my order. Ugh. You people don't get that I have no time for ignorance. I need my 12 steaks and my pork. Me, looking confused, looks down at my attire, realizing what she thought I was. Oh, I'm sorry, miss. I'm not... Helen, whatever. I expect a discount for this poor customer service. Me, trying to be as polite as I can. Um, miss, I don't work here. I... Helen, so it's bullcrap excuses now, is it? What's next? You're going to tell me you're a dentist? Me, uh, no, ma'am. I'm a commissioned blacksmith. I'm just... Helen starts laughing. Oh, that's rich. Are we doing a comedy act here? Look, where's your manager? I want to see your manager or your boss or whoever's in charge because you clearly can't do your job, and on top of that, you're lying about it. At this point, I'm getting a little bit annoyed and cross my arms. Me. Miss, if you will stop interrupting me, I will tell you I don't work here. I'm a commissioned blacksmith making a delivery. Helen, stop lying. You're in an apron and you're behind the counter. You clearly work here, and I will have you fired for your rude attitude. Me, giving her the blanket stare. FB, you got a customer. I call to the actual butcher, and he comes in, apologizes that he can't find the envelope with my payment, and I just point to the lady. This lady had an order? Helen cuts me off for the whatever -th time. Finally, your employee was very rude. He should be fired, and you should at least give me a discount for his actions. FB looks at me, confused. Miss, he doesn't work here. Helen, what? Of course he does. He was using the big old knife. Me. Lady, for the last time, I make the blades. I don't use them. And proceed to give her a stop your BS look. By that time, she was getting all huffy and FB was trying to defuse the situation, but she swings her purse at my head, misses, and breaks the glass display of meats and fresh cuts, contaminating them with broken glass. This sets FB off, and he proceeded to shout threats and insults at her and tells me to call the cops. I do, and they arrived and take her away for destruction of property, and she was forced to pay for the meat she contaminated, and she was banned from the establishment for good. I was paid and given free meat for my trouble and left with a smile on my face. And our last story. HOA tried to make me remove my rainwater cistern. After buying my first house, one thing I really wanted was a nice green lawn. I am also of the opinion that using fresh water for lawn irrigation is a waste of such a limited resource, so I set out to build an underground rainwater cistern to capture rainwater to irrigate my lawn. Operating on some assumptions that may or may not have been correct, I didn't get approval before doing so. The theory being that an underground change that results in no visible change to the exterior of the property was beyond the scope of architectural controls. I also checked my local building regulations and found that there weren't any permits required for the installation of the cistern, only for associated pumps and underground plumbing later. So I built the cistern in a wooded area to the rear of the property that isn't visible from the street. When I'm just about finished with it, I get a cease and desist letter from the HOA stating that they were doing a drive through inspection and saw me building something large out of concrete and black pipe and didn't have approval for any projects on my property. The letter stated that I needed to submit an application for approval of the cistern. They used that work specifically. I'm not sure how they even knew what it was when they couldn't see it before I continued working on it. The management company representative displayed an utter lack of knowledge in just about every aspect of our dealings, including it's highly unlikely that the town would allow a rainwater cistern in a residential yard. In fact, state law specifically prohibits any ordinance or regulation that would prohibit the installation and use of rainwater cisterns for flushing toilets and outdoor irrigation. A building permit is required for any project that includes concrete, as the town is very finicky about the use of concrete. This is also blatantly false. Not only did I have to get a town representative to state in writing that I did not need a building permit to install the cistern, but their website also states specifically that concrete patios, fences with posts set in concrete, and buildings less than 12 feet in any dimension, presumably with concrete foundations, do not require building permits. 
Approval is needed before any exterior changes are made to the property. There are plenty of written and unwritten rules allowing changes to be made without approval. Examples include building raised flower beds, installing backup generators, or removing trees less than six inches in diameter. Annoyed, I just submitted an application thinking it was someone just trying to check a box. This was a mistake. They denied the application, stating that there were no architectural standards for rainwater cisterns, so they wouldn't approve it. I appealed the decision to the board, and they set a hearing for the next board meeting. I spend a few hours preparing for this appeal. My argument includes state law stating that it's the policy of the state that the use of rainwater cisterns for flushing toilets and outdoor irrigation is critical for meeting the future water supply needs of the state. State Supreme Court decision that states that real covenants may not offend articulated matters of public policy. Our covenants and restrictions making a distinction between on, under, and over lots with architectural restrictions applying to structures placed on lots, not under lots. Simulations showing the tens of thousands of gallons of runoff that would be captured and not drained onto neighboring properties anymore. Town website actively encouraging the use of rainwater cisterns to improve water quality and decrease strain on the water supply. Photos of the side of the cistern showing that even standing next to it and looking straight at it, you cannot see it. None of this matters. The day of the hearing, the management company accidentally sends my confidential application with personal information I specifically opted out of sharing in the neighborhood directory to the entire neighborhood. After that happened, I asked a lawyer to send an email to the management company and the board on my behalf and to attend the hearing as they appeared to be acting in bad faith. The association immediately canceled the hearing since their lawyer was not available to attend. After a few weeks, they set a new hearing date for a few months out. After waiting those few months, a few days before, they canceled the second hearing as well. Suddenly interested in finding a mutual agreement. They say that I need to come to an agreement about screening the cistern and submit an application for the removal of trees. The cistern is underground. You can't see it. There's nothing to screen. They had pictures of the completed site. How they thought something had to be screened is beyond me. I also specifically placed it in a spot that I would not have to remove any trees, so not a single tree was removed. My attorney replied to their attorney within an hour of that response. It took them another eight weeks to respond, stating that the association considers this matter resolved. They wouldn't approve it, but they were no longer attempting to make me remove it. The icing on the cake? They spent somewhere between seven dollars and $9,000 on their attorney for this and raised dues on the entire neighborhood, citing skyrocketing legal fees associated with a member's architectural review appeal. My representation was provided by a family member, so there were no legal fees for me, and he suggested I take the win and move on. So I'm not planning any further legal action, but I am trying to get on the board to replace the management company and try to bring some basic sense to the association. It's so dumb that you can own a home, spend a quarter million dollars or more, and someone else can come along and say, you can't do that. You didn't ask me first. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.